Hi everyone and welcome back to Crochet Cricut. I'm Christine and today we're gonna make jellyfish. So excited. Uh, I love making crochet jellyfish. I've made them for a couple of years now uh, and these are keychain versions. Very small. Uh, you can put a clip on them so that you can clip it to a keychain or a bag. Uh, you can clip it on the zipper like I've done with this one so it becomes like a zipper pull for a crochet pouch or something. Uh, they're adorable. They're so fun to use and to give as presents. So um, let's get started. I'll show you exactly what you're gonna need to make this project. Okay, so for the materials to make this crochet uh, jellyfish, you're gonna need two colors of yarn. You're gonna need a primary color and a contrasting color. I usually like to use the lighter color as my primary color. Um, and the yarn that I'm using is a lightweight yarn. So it's a super fine uh, by um, Hobby Rainbow 8 slash 4. That's what I'm going to be using. Now you can use a, a bigger yarn, but the thicker your yarn, the um, bigger your jellyfish. So just keep that in mind. So if you want a real small one, uh, you're going to want to get a, th uh, a fine, super fine yarn like this. Uh, so I have two colors and I have uh, I'm going to use a two and a half a millimeter crochet hook. I have a darning needle that is dull on this one so that when I go to sew in I don't pick up fibers. So I have that and um, now you can do it right onto a key ring if you if that's what you have. Uh, I like to put them on these little clips right here so that I can just attach that right to the zipper of a pouch. So I'm gonna show you how to do it with that and of course a pair of scissors. So that's all of our materials. Let's get started. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a magic ring. I'm going to just make a loop like this and then stick my hook in there, pull the yarn up, and then lock it with the pull through and lock it. I like to tighten that. So now I have a movable ring. I'm gonna uh, crochet over the tail so that I can pull the tail tight to make that circle uh, tight. So we're gonna be working the, the body uh, from the top down. Um, and so the first thing we're gonna do is seven single crochets into the ring. I don't do the first uh, stitch too tight because I don't uh, chain up. So just don't do that first stitch too tight. Um, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we crocheted over the top of the tail. So now we can pull on the tail and it closes the ring. I don't. You, um, we're going to be working in continuous rounds for the first several rounds. So what that means is that I'm not joining yet. I'm going to go into this very first stitch and just do um, the first stitch of the second round. I'm going to place my stitch marker on that first stitch. So we started with seven single crochets into the ring and we're going to increase now uh, to 14. So to do that we just need to put two single crochets in every stitch around. Okay. And this will give us 14 stitches. Okay, so two in there. And two in here. Almost back around. So for round two, you have 14 stitches. Kind of got a big stitch marker, so it's a little bit in the way. I'm gonna take it out. Uh, and now for round three, you're gonna do another increase round. So continuing uh, with the continuous round, so I'll do the first stitch without joining. Place my stitch marker. And then in 
every other stitch we're going to do the increase of two so you do one single crochet and then two single crochets And it's always increasing in the second stitch of the previous increase. So one stitch and then two stitches. And this brings us to 21 stitches. Okay. One stitch, two stitches. Whoops, caught up a little bit. Let me do that one. Okay, one stitch and two stitches. Okay, so we just have one more increase to do. So round three is done. I'm going to take my stitch marker out. And this is what it looks like so far. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close up that loop completely by pulling on the tail that's going to close that up and now for the next two rounds I'm just going to do single crochet uh, in every stitch around so I'm going to do that and then I'll meet you back here for round six okay so we're done now with round five uh, so we did seven fourteen twenty one and then we did two rounds without increasing. So now we're on round six. Uh, and on round six, I'm going to go ahead and actually join into the very first stitch rather than keeping with the continuous rounds because I want to taper it off and I want it to be more straight. So I'm just going to join on these last three rounds. So when I joined here, now I'm going to chain one and I'm going to single crochet into that very same stitch for my first stitch and place my stitch marker. Okay, now we're going to pick back up with the increasing. So the last uh, sequence that we did was uh, one single crochet, two single crochets, one single crochet, two single crochets. So now uh, we're going to do two single crochets. So that was one and this is two. And then on the third stitch, I'm going to do an increase and I'm going to put two single crochets in that third stitch. And you're going to repeat that around. So I'm going to do one, two single crochets. And then on the third stitch, I will do an increase. So we'll put two there. Okay, so we'll do single crochet single crochet and then two single crochets to increase and by the end of this round we're going to have 28 stitches so I'll meet you back okay so I have done that round and I'm back to the beginning and here at the beginning I can see where I joined and the uh, chain one I'm going to skip those two things take out my stitch marker and join into the top of the first real stitch then I'm going to chain one I'm going to single crochet into the same stitch and for round seven you're just going to do single crochets all the way around so let's do that and I'll meet you back all right so I'm at the end of round seven I'm back to the beginning you can see my join and my chain and the very first stitch I'm going to join into the top of that first stitch and on round eight this will be our final round round eight is slightly different what we're going to want to do uh, we're still going to chain one and we're still going to work all the way around without any increasing but we're only going to work into the front loops so we're going to take where we joined right here you can still see that space but i'm not going to go into the whole space i'm going to take the front loop only and work my single crochet there and all the way around you're going to do one single crochet in the front loop only and it's going to look like this you just take you know in the top of your stitch you have two bars like a V you're going to take the one in the front and you're going to leave the one in the back because we're going to use the one in the back later and this is what it looks like to make sure that you're you're doing it right you should have this little ridge on the inside so do that all the way around and I'll meet you back 
Okay, so I've finished round eight. That's our last round for the body. It looks like this, it's like a tiny cup. <laughs> and, uh, and we have the ridging on the inside that we'll use later to attach our base. Um, so now I'm going to finish off by joining into the top of the very first stitch. I'm gonna cut my yarn. I'm gonna pull that through and I'm going to sew in both of those tails on the top piece. So let's do that and then I will show you the, the next part. Okay, so for the next uh, piece of your jellyfish, we're gonna make the base that goes underneath. Okay, so to do that again, we're just gonna work in rounds. We're gonna make another magic ring and it's actually just the very same beginning that we had initially. Okay, so we're gonna do seven stitches into the ring. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, again, close up your ring. Oops. And this time we will not do continuous rounds. I want the disc that I make to be round. I don't want it to have like a, um, an overlap or um, like a spiral. So I want it to be round and I will just join now into the top of the first stitch. We have seven stitches, chain one, and now do a single crochet into the same stitch that you joined into. Place your stitch marker in that first stitch. And now you're just going to do two stitches in each stitch around, increasing again, uh, just like you did when you started with the body, you're increasing from seven stitches to 14 stitches. So do that. Oh, I skipped a stitch. Whoops. There we go. Okay, so we're back around to the front, two stitches in each stitch around, remove your stitch marker, skip the join, skip the chain one, and join into the top of the very first stitch, like that, and you can go ahead and close up your loop completely. All right, and then we're just doing one more round for this space, so we'll chain one, and we'll single crochet into the very same stitch. And in the second stitch, we will do just like bef before an increase. So you do one stitch. Whoops, let me just pull some more yarn. And then an increase. One stitch and then an increase. All right, so I'm gonna do that all the way around and I'll meet you back. Okay, so I've completed this round here, uh, and that's the last round. So here we're gonna have 21 stitches. Uh, so I'm, guess I'm gonna join into the top of the first stitch. And now I am going to pull some extra yarn off because we're gonna use that as our, um, that's how we're gonna, and I'm probably probably took too much. I'm an overachiever <laughs> when it comes to that. I always take, take too much yarn. So I'm going to pull that through and that tail there, that extra little bit of yarn is what we're going to use to attach this base to, um, to the bottom of the jellyfish. And you see that it fits down in there. It will fit down in there like this. Now you have, um, 28 
loops around the circle and you only have 21 here. Uh, but it's okay because I'm going to show you how you can skip systematically so that it just lines up the way that it lines up on the bottom of that one. Uh, so that is your base and that is the top. Now again I'm going to sew in the tails of my body uh, and I'm going to sew in this starting tail here um, so it's out of my way. Those tails I want out of the way and I'm going to keep this long tail to connect the pieces. Uh, and now we just need to, um, before we start on our tentacles, we could attach uh, our, um, our attach, <laughs> you could call it. We'll do this little piece here um, that's at the top that I have, um, you know, just gives it like a nice look. Um, and this one, I did it with like one thread, but I found that I like doubling up the thread on that part. Uh, so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to take uh, two pieces of yarn. I would say, I don't know, eight, maybe one or like 18 inches or so uh, in length. I'm going to take that, cut it. So about that much, like 18 inches or so. Um, and it depends on how long you want this little piece to be. So what you're going to do, and actually you have to cut it into two pieces like that. So it's cut on both ends. It's doubled up. Um, and then what I'm going to do is leave the two tails like long like this and up at the top middle. That's where we're going to start working from because we're going to pull from both sides of this. We're going to be crocheting over the tail. Okay, so you take whatever your attach is, um, you stick your hook in the ring, and you pull the yarn from the middle point through the, the ring, right? And then you're going to have your like working yarn on one side like you usually hold your working yarn on one side and your tail down below. Uh, and the first thing you do is you pull through to lock this in place. So you have that first loop there. Now, instead of wrapping the working yarn, you're gonna wrap the tail. So I'm gonna wrap the tail over the hook, hold it in place, and then with the working yarn, I'm gonna pull through like a single crochet. There's one. I'm going to wrap the wrap the tail. And then I'm going to yarn over my working yarn and pull through like a single crochet. And I do it about four times. So yarn over with the tail, pull through the working yarn. It's a little bit tricky because I have two threads and I have a small hook. You can adjust that if you have trouble. So yarn over with the tail and then pull through both loops with the working yarn. Uh, and that's how it's looking. I did it a little bit tight at the bottom. So I might just redo it, but that is how you make your attach. Um, and then this little piece that's here, um, the working yarn, pull that through. So you have a tail on this side and a tail on this side. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take those two tails and we're going to pull them down into the body part so we can tie them on the inside and attach the body to the ring. Okay, so that piece is done. I'm just going to take a minute and sew in my tails. And then I'll meet you back. Alrighty, tails have been sewn in. So this piece doesn't have any more tails. They're all out of the way. Uh, the reason that I do that right now is because I have to sew on the little face and attach this and it just kind of gets in the way. So this piece is ready and then here I just left this tail which is the tail again to use to attach the pieces. 
and we keep those two tails because we will use those to attach this piece. Uh, and now for the tentacles, what you're going to do is you're going to take your base that you created. Um, and I usually do the contrasting color three times and the uh, main color twice. So I'm going to take my dark purple and I'm going to go ahead and attach to the base so that I don't have to sew on the tentacles after. I think it's easier that way. Um, and we're going to use that inside circle uh, from the first round to attach the tentacles. And this is also where you may want to have a smaller hook. Just like I have a two millimeter here just because it's easier to get the thread through. Now I want to bring both. Um, so I want to just pick one of these holes to start with. Like I guess let's, let's take this one. And I'm going to go and go under both the holes so that like the stitch is right there. Uh, and then I'm going to pull a tentacle, pull the thread through. So it's like I have both the tails on like the both of it on the same side. The tail is here and the working yarn is here. And then I'm going to chain up. I usually alternate. So I'll do five tentacles and the first tentacle I do will be 20 stitches uh, and it will be in the con um, the contrasting color. And then the next tentacle I do will be 22 stitches in the main color. And so then I just alternate around like that. Um, so I'll do the first one with you. Three, I'm just going to chain 20. So that's four, five, six, Actually, I was supposed to switch back to my regular hook. Let me re let me restart that. I usually just keep this smaller hook because it makes it easier to pull the thread through, but it really wouldn't matter which hook I used. But I'm gonna go back to my regular one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Perfect. And then from the second chain from the hook, you're going to just slip stitch down that chain. It may be hard to see with this dark colored yarn, but I'm just slip stitching all the way back the chain. And you want to do the slip stitches like, I mean, fairly snug. Um, you don't have to do them too tight, but certainly don't do this part really loosely because you want the tentacles to kind of twist a little bit. Uh, we're going to twist them more at the end, but if you do your slip stitching really loosely, uh, that won't help you with them being twirly. And we want nice twirly tentacles, don't we? So I'm just getting back down to the base here won't take too much longer and uh, very important uh, you want to be on this uh, you want to be on the right side of the base if i didn't make that clear before so this is the back and then this is the the front uh, and that looks a little nicer so that's the side also when you connect the pieces that's the side you need facing up so it connects better sorry i'm just trying to i think i twisted this so okay we're getting back up to the start get back up to and just remember that you know that first stitch is loose you can pull on the tail to tighten it up uh, and you get back into that first stitch slip stitch and then whoop, come on now it's even hard for me to see with all the lights <laughs> in the dark yard okay there we go so now that you have done the chain and you've slip stitched back up the chain you're just going to cut that yarn Okay, and you have the two tails on this side. 
So I'm going to pull this tail through and the first tail is coming out of this side. So what I want to do, I can't pull it down through this hole. I want to like anchor it. So I'm going to go to the other hole on the other side and I'm going to pull that thread through. So I'm kind of like crossing it over. And then this tail here, I'm just going to pull through the other hole. And both of our tails will be on the back side or the inside of our work. And the tails will become your filling. So you don't need any extra filler. Um, you'll have enough tails from these tentacles to pretty much fill it up. So I'm going to tie this in place. Um, like that. And I usually tie it three times. So that's one, two, and three. Three ties. And that's our first tentacle. And you see it kind of twists a little bit on its own. But, you know, you'll be able to twist it up a little bit more and play with it and, like, shape it into place after you get done, which is kind of fun. So then just going um, counterclockwise, I always go counterclockwise. Um, I go to the next set of holes. Sometimes you have to reuse a set of holes um, because if you skip a stitch every time, you'll run out. Uh, but for the most part, you can skip a stitch um, and sometimes you have to go into the same. So just, you know, put them around evenly. I do five. You can do uh, five or six. I find five is enough. So I'm going to go into the next stitch. And this time I'm going to switch to my main color. Back to my main color. There we go. Okay. Again, you're just going to find, you're just going to take it like, like that. That's too much in the background now. And then you're just going to pull it through. So you have a loop on this side, and you have the working yarn and the tail coming out the other side. Let the tail drop. And then, you know, use that hook or switch back like I do. This time I'm going to do 22 and I'm going to work all these tentacles up and once that's done I'll meet you back and we will sew on our face and attach our attachment uh, and then put everything together. So I'll, I'll meet you back for that. Okay, so now we're going to sew on our little face and you can use like I used uh, a gray. On this one um, because I didn't that green wasn't quite dark enough for me but this purple is really dark so it works well so you're just gonna take um, a small piece I don't know about 10 inches or so cut it and you're gonna get your darning needle and this is why I recommend that you have a dull one so that you don't accidentally get stuck getting like pulling the fibers or anything because you want to try to go between the stitches okay so I find my back so like this was the back and then I find the front and then I just try to go a little bit to the side of there to start so I start on the left and I go to the right that's how I do it um, and then I go on that not on that bottom round but the one above and I'll just pull through, leaving a tail in the back. And I'm going to do that first eyeball. So we're just going to, you know, you could go in this one. It will have more like squinty eyes or you could have bigger eyes. So I'll go over one more. Whoops. Pull it through. And then here I'll just go like, you just kind of have to go where you think looks nice. I'll go there, and that is my first eye, and I try to kind of make it, shape it a little bit so it points, 
Um, and then I'll go, I'll just jump. Like I'm not super intricate about my faces. Um, you know, there are a lot of tutorials out there to show you how to do super cool faces. I just want a basic one. So I'm just going to jump down here. Uh, and you don't pull too, too tight because you don't want to deform what you did. And I'm just going to go one stitch over to make the mouth. There we go. And then I go one stitch over to start my second eyeball. And then again, I can go like way over there or just right here. I'm just going to go right there. Make it how it looks good to you. And you can try a, a totally different face. Maybe, you know, maybe you could do your, your jellyfishes can have a different expression than mine. <laughs> And then I'm going to pick a spot to come out, like right there. And go back in. And that is a very basic, very simple face that you can do for your, your jellyfish. And now what you have to do is I just tie the ends together, but I do it very carefully because I don't want to like scrunch up my face and I don't want it to be too loose either where it comes, um, you know, out a bit. So just the very first tie that you do, try to keep it like it pulls, but it doesn't like distort your face. And then on the, and do it real lightly. And then on the second time, you can pull a little tighter. Just try to make sure that you have that first one where you want it and then because if you pull too tight it's gonna slip and your face will be like a it'll suck it in <laughs> so you don't want to do that so you just want to try to keep your shape that you have just do it easy until you see that it catches and then I just do a third one there okay so that is how you do the face. And now we are going to attach our clip. So now we're going to attach the clip to our body. And you're just going to want to pick out, you know, the good spot wherever it kind of straddles in the middle. I'm going to pull through one side. There's two threads. Actually, I'm going to bring my other hook so it grabs better. Okay. So, find the spot we want to try. I'm going to try here and see. We'll see how it looks. Try to get it in the middle. Okay, just going to pull that through. Yep. those <clears throat> two and then the other two on the next hole over there there we go <clears throat> and then before we tie it just gonna have a look and see if we like the placement of it Okay, I just need to find the two separate, separate threads. Okay, those two and these two. And pull on them to make sure it's in there. And just look and see. That looks pretty good. Like that. And now I'm just going to tie these together. So, here we go. Tie that together. Bring it down. You want to make sure you get it kind of down in there good. So that it's like nice and seamless on the top. And then we'll do a second knot. And a third knot. 
the triple tie. Okay, and then that's what the top of our jellyfish looks like. And then all of this is just going to be filling, so you don't even have to sew it in. It's going to be fillier. Uh, and now for the next step, we're going to sew, uh, and this is the last step, you're already there. We're going to sew on our base with our tentacles to our body, and then we'll be all done. So I'll meet you back uh, once my tentacles are all ready to be, uh, you know, my base is ready with all its tentacles. So now for the fun part, our base is all ready. Uh, these are my tentacles. That's how they come out. Uh, see how they're evenly distributed around that circle in the center? I don't know if you can tell. Um, and then you've got this tail for joining and all this, uh, these lovely tails that you do not have to sew in. We hate sewing in tails around here, so we avoid it at all costs. <laughs> um, so I just going to wrap it around there and scrunch it up. And I pushed all these tails in already. And I do try to line up the back of my uh, pieces. So I'm just stick that there. And then so like this is the back and then this was the back seam. So I line that up and just get everything squished up in there. Um, and we're going to take this uh, and if it was a bit too long, uh, you can cut it. Actually, like I think I left too much. So I'll cut that. There. And you just need to be able to go around so you don't need a great lot uh, of yarn. Take your darning needle, thread it, and here we go. So we're just finishing our jellyfish. Um, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pick up on these loops that you left on the back of the body. So we're going to go in, under both, uh, under the, the stitch um, on the base of where your tentacles are attached. And we're going to go straight up underneath that loop that we left there. And we'll just pull that up. Now on the way back over, because I have more loops than I have stitches here. So I'm going to skip one of these loops and go to the next one. And then come straight down into the, the next stitch. And I'll go back up again. I won't skip this time. I'll go right into the one right above. And then I'll skip one of these, go to the next, and go straight down. And I pretty much skip one every time. I'm going in that specific direction. So like when I'm going this way, I'm going to skip that one and I'll go to the next one. There, When you start getting around to the other side, you'll see if you need to keep skipping or if you've skipped enough and you can stop skipping. There, I don't really know the exact number. <laughs> I think there's like two or three times that so you don't have to actually skip and it'll fit uh, up against there. So like... Actually, I'm not going to skip one. I'm just going to go ahead and not skip one to kind of even it out. And then go back up into the next one. This time I'll skip one. So you're catching every stitch on the bottom, but only every other loop on the top. Um, and by doing that, it helps that to stick like right up against it instead of it kind of bulging out from the bottom. I don't like to see my the jellyfish bottom to bulge out <laughs> and be like a circle, so that's why I've designed it this way. Oh, I could skip one. And keep on going around. I may not need to skip anymore. You see it's kind of lining up at the end. So I'm going to do it a little bit without skipping any and see when I get near to the end how, how it looks. I just have to keep watching it to make sure it's lining up. Mm -hmm. 
just keep swimming, swimming. I've got that Dory thing in my head. <laughs> I'm going to have to watch Finding Nemo after this. Okay, we're coming up to the end. Almost done with our project. So exciting. And they're so easy and quick to do. Okay, one more here. And we're back to the start. I mean, you could do another, like, one for good measure. But it's pretty secure. And then that's that's how it's looking on the bottom. It's all stitched up. Now we just need to hide this tail. So I'm going to just like bring it up through the body somewhere, anywhere. Uh, just don't pull too tight because you don't want to distort the shape of your jellyfish. Now I'm just going to follow the stitch line. So this stitch goes this way. So I'm going to go like that. So it kind of hides it and I'm going to pop around to another side. And careful that I don't pull through the stuff the the stuff inside to the outside. So you want to go a little slow when you do this part here. Pull that over, and again, don't pull it too tight because you just want to like hide that and make it look like a stitch. Um, and then for the last, like I'll just do it one more time. I'll follow the stitch line here, and I'll bring it out from the bottom. Somewhere and you see like how I, I, I'm pushing stuff out now. So I just have to be careful that I don't push anything out. There. And then I'm going to snip that. And it's going to fall back inside. And it'll be all hidden away. And then we have our jellyfish. Who is adorable. And then you can shape it. You can squish him. We'll call him Squishy. I think that's what Dory called her jellyfishes. So we'll call this one squishy. And you can shape up your, your tentacles. And it's adorable. It's cute. I love it. And I've made like so many. Um, so yeah, if you really like that tutorial, uh, please uh, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to make a pouch, I don't have this specific pattern, uh, but I do have other pouch patterns. Um, I'll put a link to them on the uh, screen so you can just jump over and make yourself a crochet pouch to attach your jellyfish to. Thanks guys. Have a great day.